witches and wizards of the world! This is an emergency broadcast of the WWN. My friends, I have been sifting through the mosquitoes sent out by our current Muggle president in our mosquito net just in the past 24 hours. But one of them is a unique threat to democracy everywhere. And so I come to you in an emergency broadcast that we would address this particular mosquito right now. So says the current Muggle president. <clears throat> the fake news media, failing New York Times, NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN, is not my enemy. It is the enemy of the American people. My friends, this phrase, enemy of the people, when spoken by a leader, about journalists or a free press. This kind of phrase is not the creation of the current Muggle president. It is a very, very old phrase with a dark and bloody history. When faced with this crisis, I did what Hermione Granger would do. I went straight to the library and I wrote down in a scroll the names of a few Muggles just in the last century, leaders, tyrants, who made a habit of speaking precisely this way against journalism. <clears throat> Joseph Stalin, Vladimir Lenin, Adolf Hitler, Chairman Mao, Pol Pot, Joseph McCarthy, Vladimir Putin. Friends, the list goes on and on. This current Muggle president, in this particular mosquito, has declared war on a free press, and we must resist this mosquito with everything we have. This, by the way, is a tool I picked up yesterday. I was visiting the newest museum in London. It's a magical museum. The Arthur Weasley Museum of Muggle Artifacts. This was in the gift shop. I thought it would be a very helpful tool in our times. But I digress. <clears throat> also in the library, I discovered an odd fact in the Muggle Studies section, and it is this. The current Muggle president wrote a book. I then did some research and found out that he did not in fact write the book himself the way most of us write the books that we claim to write. Someone wrote it for him, but nonetheless, I got a copy of it. It is called The Art of the Deal, and I found one page particularly helpful. <clears throat> so says the current Muggle president. We are on page 305. If there's one thing I've learned from dealing with politicians over the years, it's that the only thing guaranteed to force them into action is the press, or more specifically, fear of the press. My friends, from the mouth of the Muggle president himself, the admission that it is only the press that can tame tyrants. It is the truth that threatens deceit and dictator. He has declared war on the free press. My friends, resistance always means supporting a free and unfettered press. But sometimes it means supporting a free and unfettered press. I encourage all of you, witches and wizards and muggles alike, Buy newspapers. Read newspapers. I hear in the muggle world there are all kinds of platforms on which you can receive news, even for free. Those of you who are witches and wizards think that only trains arrive on platforms. But in the muggle world, all sorts of things can arrive on all sorts of platforms. But I call upon you, those of you reading news on such platforms, even if it is free, find a way, find a way to support every platform of truth. The current Muggle president has declared war on all of us who seek the truth, and we must fight back. In the magical world, we know by experience the danger of a limited or a corrupted press. If you are a witch or a wizard, you grew up reading our beloved newspaper. I receive one every day, the Daily Prophet, but what you'll remember during the dark times of Voldemort 
there were problems with only having one major paper. Of course, there were other smaller publications. One I'm sure you've heard of was The Quibbler. There are old copies of it here in Hogwarts Library. Uh, Mr. Lovegood, who was the editor of The Quibbler, did his best not only to publish columns about conspiracy theories or outbreaks about things like Nargles, but he also spoke truth to power. And he knew the truth about Voldemort and the corruption at the Ministry. And what happened to Mr. Lovegood? The corrupt Ministry used the levers of government to kidnap his daughter Luna and to destroy his house of production. No more quibbler. That is what it looks like when there is not a free press or when there are just a few press outlets that can be destroyed. We were left only in those dark times with the prophet. And the prophet did an okay job. It really was our only paper. You remember some of these headlines, which I brought up from the library. They reported accurately when there was a breakout at Azkaban. That was helpful news, and it was true. And then they followed the Death Eaters that had escaped and the threat they caused to all of us. But then, my friends, once the ministry was corrupt and there was only one paper with which to contend, the dark forces, the Death Eaters, they took over the prophet, and we got headlines like this. Dumbledore, daft or dangerous? Dumbledore, daft? How does this happen? This, my friends, is evidence of corruption. Eventually, though, the truth could not be hidden. And a headline which many of you might remember finally came out of the Daily Prophet. But what was the lesson that we learned? One newspaper is not enough. One quibbler is not enough. We have learned our lesson, and there are many more papers now in the wizarding world because we recognize that part of the darkness in the time of Voldemort came from the very fact that we had a limited press, and eventually a limited press taken over. My friends, think back in history to another infamous tyrant who could not tolerate the truth. The dangerous muggle tyrant Pontius Pilate, you remember the story, when he held the face of the great wizard of Nazareth in his hands. And he looked into that face, he looked into truth itself, and asked, what is truth? His way of saying, you have your truths, I have mine. You have your facts, I have my alternative facts. I have so much power, and the truth is so fragile, I can hold it in my hand. Sadly, my friends, he won the battle over the body that he held that day. Pilate won many battles against truth. Many battles against truth. He drew blood. He knew how to win the crowd. Just like our current Mughal president, the Mughal Pontius Pilate always won the crowd. But in the end, ultimately, did Pontius Pilate win the war? Oh yes, he won many battles against truth, but did he win the war against truth? My friends, history proves he did not. And you can read about it in the Christian creed. The creed said by believers all over the world for almost 2,000 years, whenever they gather and speak what they believe. In fact, right now, someone, somewhere, some group of people are speaking the truths of God. And when they do, they will say the name Pontius Pilate to remind the world that tyrants who cannot tolerate the truth, though they win small battles, they cannot win the war against truth. Thank you for tuning in to the WWN for this emergency broadcast. I sign off with two truths. The first, the motto of our network at the WWN, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And the second, I now speak directly to the current Muggle president. <clears throat> Mr. Muggle president, you have declared war on the free press of the United States of America. The resistance has taken note of this, and we will oppose you. Sir, you have won elections. You have already won battles against people and against the press. And sadly, I believe 
that you will win more. And like all tyrants, you will draw blood. But I know that somewhere in your shattered soul looms the great question. Though you have won battles, can you win the war against truth? I am here today to tell you, <clears throat> Mr. Muggle President, that the answer to that question is not a mystery hidden away in the Department of Mysteries. It is a prophecy available if only you choose to read it. The answer to the question, sir, of whether or not you can win the war against truth is available. All you have to do is read the creed 